Welcome to Boomhauer 69's channel. And today Boomhauer is going to talk about basically the history of a Rika vacuum cleaner. This is my oldest vacuum cleaner I got in the house. It's a 80s to 70s model. It was made sometime in the 70s to early 80s about. And we'll get more in depth in that. But first I want to talk about the history. I gather up some history information from the web about the Arika vacuum cleaner and I thought I would share it. It says, in 1909, the real estate auctioneer Fred Wardell of Detroit, Michigan acquired several patents for emerging vacuum cleaner technology and started up the Arika company in 1910. He incorporated companies in Michigan by 1913. By 1913, Arika Cleaners came in six different models with a multitude of attachments for walls, upholstery, and bare floors. The Cleaners were sold to the public through two distributors, one handling accounts to the east of the imaginary line, imaginary line through Detroit and the other handling accounts to the west. From its headquarters in a 3.5 acre factory in downtown Detroit, Eureka manufactured 2,000 vacuum cleaners a day. By 1919, the demand for Eureka vacuum for Eureka cleaners grew through the 1920s. Eureka advertised its cleaners nationally and the company relied on an army of door-to-door -door salesmen who, which, who pitched the products, usefulness, and efficiencies to the housewives throughout the country. Um, throughout the country, Wardell was a a fiery motivator who used tactics like betting his salesmen two thousand to their ten dollars that they couldn't beat their quotas. Selling products this way was expensive because of the cost of commissions, 22 on an $80 machine. The thousands of units tied up as demonstrators and the fact that salesmen sometimes disappeared with customers' deposit or machines, but the ever-growing demand appeared to justify the cost. At times, Eureka employed more than 3,000 door-to-door salesmen. I wish vacuum cleaners cost 80 bucks nowadays. Now they're like, for a good one, almost like 500, 400, or something like that, 300. Arika also used other models of dis distributors, distribu distributors. The company leased space in retail outlets, but used its own salesmen to sell its cleaners. All thought customers were generally unaware that the salesman represented Arika and did not work for the retailer. The company also sold its products at utility companies, retail outlets, which at the time sold numbers of electric drink appliances. By the mid-1920s, Arika held approximately one-third of the vacuum cleaning market from 1919 throughout 1929. New sales average seven point eighty eight million and net profit average one point nine million. The depression soon dampened Arika's enthusiasm for its costly sale force like other companies. Eureka retreated from its dependence on door to door salesmen who averaged twenty twenty calls before they made one sale and the shifted its Emphasis on emphasis from selling through through retailers to se selling to them from 1933 to 1936 sales averaged 2.68 million and profits were 251,000. Its expensive dis distribution system unsuccessfully new products introduced. Arika also came. Out with a portable range, range which which flopped, an outdated factory, 
exacerbated ex ex exacerbated the effects of the collapse of consumer buying during the depression by 1937 the company was in the red and from 1937 to 1939 the annual losses averaged 199,000 around 200,000 all thought the quality of Eureka Cleaners were still respected. The company was floundering, and Wardell had admittedly lost enthusiasm for running it. He persuaded Henry Burritt, the chief of sales of Nash Collaviators, the manufacturer of Calvinators, Calvinator Refrigerators to take charge of the company in 1939. Burrett took over and set about a recognizing, reorganizing Arika's distributed youth system, shaking up top management and redesigning the vacuum cleaner. In 1940, the company discontinued its use of door to door salesmen. Nevertheless, losses continued with a 500,000 loss on almost 5 million in sales. In 1941, vacuum cleaner sales had fallen to about 7% in the industrial total. From 1942 until the end of World War II, Eureka factory produced only war materials. During the compliments, those of Eureka, Burt was also eager to evacuate the outdated factory in Detroit because of its because of what one vice president vice president called the contaminants of Detroit's labor area meaning the highly unionized workforce in that city also the um superhighway was set to be built through the center of Detroit in the middle of Eureka's plant Burrett looked at dozers of the most obvious prospect, mainly manufacturers of the other household appliances like refrigerators, but none were interested. He finally settled on Williams Oilmatic Heating Corporation, a manufacturer of, of oil burners based in Bloomington, Illinois. Oilmatics had been founded by Walter W. Williams in 1918, scared cold, the scarce cold suppliers during World War I, spurred Williams to invent his invent in his garage a new type of oil burner, one that w was designed to use crude oil or even use crankcase oil as opposed to water white kerosene that used crude oil or water like kerosene that was most often used. Oil medics have had gone on to manufacture refrigerators introduced refrigerators introduced in in nineteen twenty eight with water heaters and air conditioners. The aromatics came out on nineteen thirty three before the war. The company turned uh, turned out 40,000 oil burners and 50,000 refrigerators annually from 1942 through the end of the war. Its plant made only products for the war, including parts for B-29 bombers and C-47 transport planes and automatic fire control devices. By 1945, Oilmatic was not faring well. Williams had grown uninterested in his Company and the company stock, which once stood at thirty dollars a share, was now selling for seven dollars a share, which was a great loss there. In nineteen forty-five, in nineteen forty-five, Eureka issued one point seven six million yen's worth of common stock and used used the proceeds to purchase two hundred and forty-five thousand shares of Williams stock from Walter Williams for. 1.39 million. The remaining 185,000 shares of William stocks were traded for Eureka's common stock, two for one. 
Burrett, who knew nothing about oil burners, made it made it a condition of the merger merger that Williams present president W. A. Math Masson would would stay to run that division. The new Enrico Williams company came to extinction existence June fourth, nineteen forty five. The company used the five hundred thousand it had received it had received in in compensations for the contamination of its Detroit plant to move to Bloomington Bloomington which was considered to have much more favorable labor market than Detroit. And by 1946, the company was distributing its vacuum cleaners throughout through 5,500 dealers with 55 distributors. 12 of the companies owned by 1947, those numbers had increased to 8,500 dealers and 9,000 retailers. Burt began to spend heavily on National advertising, a practice that had lapsed in 1930s, and the company had a net worth of six million that year in the fiscal year ending June 1947. Sales totaled 21 million with profit of 1 million oil burners. There's accounted for approximately one third of the sales and profits. However, there was almost no overlaps in production in distrib- distribution of the merging companies in attempts to broaden its array of consumer goods and a large distribution network. Erika Williams bought the Chicago-based National Stamping and Electric Works in 1946 for $640,000. In dollars, the company made electric toasters, irons, and other appliances under the White Cross label with sales of 500000 a year. Of the following year, it came out with a line of electrical, electric disposable units, the Disposomatic, which I imagine you can find pictures of that online. Even with wider distribution and national advertising, Arika constantly ran behind Hoover in vacuum cleaners. Cleaners circles a battle, a battle raged between the proponents of the canister type cleaners and upright models. Arika sidestepped the issue by selling both an assortment of attachments in the Arika home cleaning system, which in 1947. So for the hefty sum of of one hundred and forty four dollars and ninety five cents, this gimmick allowed Arika to sell cleaners per sales instead of one. In nineteen fifty three, Williams was purchased by Henry Mo- Henry Henry Motor Company. Henry, based in Freeport, Illinois, was controlled by principal stockholder. C. Russell Fedman. The deal was reported to be worth four million. Four million with was Fedman laying down only about four hundred thousand in cash while assuming Erika Williams' obligation. Erika Williams became a division of Henry Motor Company. The Arika celebrated its 50th anniversary, the year in 1959, and the year in which Fetterman announced his intentions to merge Arika Williams with the National Union, National Union Electric Corporation, a heating and air conditioning manufacturer of which Fetterman was both chairman and president at the time. Of the merger, Arika Williams was a described as a manufacturer, vacuum cleaner, oil burners, school furniture, aircraft generators, hydraulic motors, starters, and inverters, and thermal batteries at plants in Bloomington and 
Canastoka, New York. Fedman took Arica Private and it became a division of National Union. Arica Williams fared well with National Unions playing the part of steady and conservative manu- manufacturer in a rather idocitric company. Fedman, Fedman and an avid inventor and golfer drew to in taken in to I N T R I G U N D with the idea in toyed in toyed with the idea of an electric automotive to hatch a plan to build a market build and market the cars through utility companies just like other electric products. The cars whose top speed was 35 miles per hour sold for 3500 but but of the hundred of car manufacturers, only 47 were sold by 1971. Erika Williams accumulated for 40 to 50 percent of National Union sales and profits, and National Union reported that vacuum cleaners' nurse volume had climbed for the 12th consecutive years. In 19, in June of 1974, Electrolux AB, the Swedish vacuum cleaner manufacturer, announced its bid for National Union. Union Electrolux had been unavailable. To use its name in the United States since 1968, when it sold its American Electrolux company subsidiary to Consolidate Foods Company, and it was looking to re-enter the lucrative American market. National Union supporter Electrolux takeover of Arika Williams, and whose name was changed back to the Arika Company. And so Electrolux started making. In, in the 70s, the vacuum cleaners. Eureka's 75th anniversary, 1984, was said by the company to be the best sales year ever. Electrolux reported that sales had increased to 211% over the previous decades, five times faster than the industrial average, but the company continued to trail Hoover in attempts to cut production costs Arika began to move vacuum cleaners production out of Blooming, Bloomington's opening Bloomington's and opening a plant to make uprights in El Paso, Texas in 1983, another one in Jawaz, Mexico in 1984 and 1989. A major recognition can effort saw hundreds of employees laid off at its Bloomington faculties as recession rippled through the economy. In 1990, Arica announced that it was moving production of upright screeners completely to El Paso. The manufacturer and assembly of canisters were consequentially consolidated at its plant at Normal Illinois, while headquarters and other manufacturers operating remain at Bloomington, Arica reported that it spent $2.2 million to reconstructure its plant in Illinois. So this one right here I got, this vintage fat coin, was either made in Mexico, at the plant in Mexico, or El Paso, Texas, most likely. Because this is a 80s to 70s model. In 1991... Arica saw a loss in market shares, especially to a, a third place royal brand. Some industry source quoted in HFD blamed the drop on companies' late entry into the attached tool upright market, which at that time held about 40%. If the market that experience prompted yet another round of reassignments, a visit from an executive at Electrolux to help steaming production and another recognition of Erectro of Eureka seemed determined to take a 
more aggressive, proactive attitude towards production and introduction of introduction in advertising, expanding its national advertising revenue by 300%. It's also lower prices. Sport cars, the Corvette's name. Sports cars, the Corvette's name on license from General Motors Corporation was used to lure car owners who would be attracted to cleaning their cars with it. The production was instantly successful. Arika also introduced items at the high end of the market to fill the categories of home cleaning market. Examples were wet and dry vacuums and rechargeable units. By the mid-1990s, Arika held a steady at a steady at its persona numbers to two positions in vacuum cleaner market, but had rebound from losses in the market shares in the early 1990s. The company claimed its highest sales ever in 1993. Arika had about 20% of of the 600 million yens claimed its highest sales ever in 1993. Arika held about 20% of 600 million full-size cleaner markets and compared with Hoover's 35%. The company manufacturer was more than 100 different models of vacuum cleaners for home as well as commercial use. So basically what that's saying is, this is just, I read the history of, of the Rika vacuum cleaners. So basically, Rika has its ups and downs like most companies would, and so my understanding is from that, what I found on the internet, that was information history I found on the internet, according to that, Arika was like second from Hoover, where Hoover vacuum cleaners were like number one, and then Arika was like number two. But yeah, now on to this right here. This is my old Arika vacuum cleaner. I bought this at a garage sale user. Uh, Quite a few years back. And I bought it because I remember as a kid growing up. I was born in 1990. And my mother used to love Arika vacuum cleaners. And I remember her using these. And what this is. is This is either a 70s or 80s model. According to the. Um, there's some. A date um, written on it. 1988. That could be just when somebody had this service. And not necessarily the actual date when it was manufactured. But. I'm assuming by the Shea carpet features, this is either a 70s, from the 70s, or 80s. Because around that time, Shea carpet was still, still what pillars. Because Shea carpet came out, I think, about in the later 60s, early 70s. 70s is when Shea carpet was a real popular thing to have in the home. But yeah, as you can see right here. Here, if you can see that, I don't. But yeah, right there is the features it has. Now, the only thing on this vacuum cleaner that does not work is the light. It just needs a new bulb. But it's got your features for low shag, medium shag, deep shag, high, normal, and low. Those are the features that. And this one is the Arika Edge Clean Cleaner Vibra Groomer 2. That's the model this is. And this takes the Arika triple filter bags. It's a ESP extra suction power. And it takes the F and G bags used. General line Arikas. And back in the good old days, you would simply just pull the zipper down to remove the, the bag. And then you would replace the bag. Now this, I don't have any bags for it. It needs a new bag, so I can't turn it on. But this was made back before they they decided to uh, make vacuum cleaners with with hoses on them. This was made when when they were still just making vacuums without a hose and stuff. So all you could do is just clean carpets with this. It's got a little pot, like you know, you can pull this down. It's got a little lever where you would pull that down. And then here. And then right here, this little black button is your on and off switch to turn it on and off. It does work. It just needs a bulb. 
and then you have this right here for normal and you would turn that for your normal high low settings or if you want high you would turn not you turn this knob right here here I'll show you turn this knob right here to whatever settings you want high medium or low depending on your settings determine what you want I just always left this on normal now I don't use this vacuum because it's just old it's just a collector's item now because I think someday it will be worth some money but yeah and this has the settings again for shag carpet this was made back when shag carpet was a thing and again this doesn't have a hose to it because this model of vacuum cleaner didn't come with a hose usually around this time if you wanted that hose feature you know she so had to buy a separate unit you know this was made back when um vacuum cleaners didn't come with hoses and they made separate vacuum cleaners for the hose attachments and all that stuff and then sometime i think it was in the 90s is when they decided to make these kind of vacuum cleaners with an actual hose attachment you know and nowadays everybody uses the all famous bagless vacuum this one right here takes a bag and again what you would do is you would just simply unzip this all the way down here's what the um old f and f and g bags look like and you would remove this bag you throw it in the trash and then you would replace it with another paper bag bag you would have to go buy bag separate you know and you would buy a new bag and then you would install it and then you would just simply zip this up and then you would go ahead and start vacuuming matter of fact i'll even see if i can't unravel the cord here Ooh. and i'll show you that it does work it'll be pretty loud so if you're using headphones you might want to turn down your speaker but there's what it would do. It would fill up with air and can and suck up all the dust and dirt again. It's because I got it on here. Let me. But there's what it would do. The bag would fill up with air and it would suck up the power. Now, normally the light would would come on. But since this has a burned out bulb, that doesn't work, but yeah. But there's the history of Arika vacuum cleaners. I hope you learned something that I did, you know, learn something and stuff. And I wanted to do a, a video of a vintage ditch product I own. Now, I don't use this as a vacuum cleaner no more. I just keep it for display purposes. And when I have young children around to give them a little history lesson about vintage vacuum cleaners and plus it's something my mother had passed away years ago and and i always remember her using these kind of vacuums as a kid growing up so it kind of has some mm. sentimental value there but yeah but that's all i hope you learned something and i know this is kind of a long video you know because i'm a because of all the reading there but yeah i hope you learned something about the Eureka company and how they came to be and stuff and if you like this sort of content, you know, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and comment below your thoughts and stuff. And hope you learned something. I did too. And thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. And and again, I'm no professional at this, so I'm just a beginner learning as I go along. And But again, hope you enjoyed this video and hope you all have a good day. And thank you for watching.